This is a podcast about the ligaments of the lower limb. It's important to understand the function of ligaments, what they do, where they come from and where they go to. The main function of a ligament is to allow movements in the direction that we want, but to restrict movement in the directions that's not desirable. For example, you can see on this graphic somebody hyperextending the knees. This movement will be limited by the cruciate ligament. First of all, we're going to start by discussing the ligaments around the pelvis and the hip. The first ligament we're going to look at is actually quite an odd ligament because it goes from one immobile bone to another immobile bone. Normally a ligament spans a joint, but in this case it's all on the pelvis and it's called the inguinal ligament. It's quite important. It goes from the anterior superior iliac spine to the pubic tubercle and it forms an anchor point for abdominal muscles and it also forms a canal which allows some vessels to pass through. You might have heard of an inguinal hernia. We've also got ligaments that hold the sacroiliac joint together. We've got anterior and posterior sacroiliac ligaments. And we have ligaments joining the two halves of the pubis together anteriorly. To understand the ligaments of the hip joint itself, we need to understand the bones of the pelvis. So we've coloured them here in red, yellow and green. The red is the ilium, the green is the pubis and the yellow is the ischium. Those three bones fuse together in the acetabulum. I've coloured the acetabulum in blue here on this graphic. The hip joint is a ball and socket joint and the best way I think to compare it is to an egg in an egg cup. So the egg is fairly secure and it can spin in various directions, but it needs to be controlled. On these two graphics I've tried to illustrate on the left the acetabular labrum which is a layer of fibre cartilage which makes the egg cup a little bit deeper and grabs hold of the egg a little bit better, like a piece of sellotape. And on the right, I've tried to show the capsule of the hip joint. So if you look at a hip joint in a cadaver, you won't see three distinct ligaments as you may do in a textbook. You'll see a bag that holds everything together and that's thickened in three different locations. So we have three ligaments that come from the ilium the ischium and the pubis, but they're blended with a capsule. Hip joint's also a little bit odd. There's a ligament inside the hip joint, a little bit like the cruciates inside the knee. This is called a ligamentum teres, and it goes from a depression in the center of the femoral head called a fovea, F-O-V-E-A, and it goes to the base of the acetabulum. We're not too sure what it does, but it probably supplies blood to the head of the femur. In terms of the three ligaments of the hip, we've got one ligament that comes from the ilium to the femur. That's the iliofemoral ligament. We've got one that comes from the ischium to the femur. That's the ischiofemoral ligament. And then to complete the capsule, we have a pubofemoral ligament going from the pubis to the neck of the femur. This picture is trying to show you the attachments distally of the capsule. As you can see, they basically wrap around the neck of the femur. But one thing that's important to realize is that posteriorly, the capsule only ends halfway down the neck of the femur whereas anteriorly it goes further down. So the iliofemoral ligament goes down to the intertrochanteric area, as you can see on the right graphic here. This is a colorized version of the three capsular ligaments of the hip. And you can see how the iliofemoral ligament actually splits and it's Y-shaped. Here's a little rhyme to help you remember the names of the three ligaments of the hip. Moving down to the knee, these are the four ligaments that you need to know. We have two collaterals, a medial and a lateral. 
and two cruciate ligaments, an anterior and a posterior. There are other ligaments in the knee, but these are the ones that you have to know. Cruciate means that they cross over and they cross over inside the knee, so you can't palpate them, they're too deep. But they're very important in controlling the movements of the tibia on the femur or the femur on the tibia if the foot's fixed on the ground. They also control the locking mechanism of the knee and have a really important role in proprioception as well. And the way that the cruciates are designed is that they are fan shaped. So no matter what position your knee is in, some portion of the fibres are always under tension and that will send proprioceptive signals to the brain. couple of short videos here. On the left we have an indication of what you would do to see if somebody's ruptured their anterior cruciate ligament. That's called a PA draw because you're going from back to front or posterior to anterior. And the graphic on the right is to show the same kind of thing but to test the posterior cruciate ligament which is an AP draw or an antero-posterior draw. This is to show you the main movements that are limited by the anterior cruciate ligament which is here in orange and the posterior cruciate ligament here which is in green. ACL injuries are about nine times commoner than posterior cruciate ligament injuries. They're also commoner in women than men probably because of the different Q angle. This illustration shows a knee that's flexed just to show you the location of the collaterals in green and the cruciates in stripy green here and the picture of the hand next to it tries to illustrate the way that the cruciate ligaments cross over each other. The collateral ligaments lie at either side of the knee. We've got a medial and a lateral, and these two videos show you how you would test to see if there is damage or a rupture to the medial and the lateral collateral ligaments. The video on the left shows a valgus stress test where you're trying to make the patient not need, and that stresses the medial collateral ligament. And then a vera stress test is when you're trying to take the leg into a bow leg position. That stresses the lateral collateral ligament. This is an actual knee joint again in flexion and you can see the femur. If you look at the two blobs looking at you, they're the femoral condyles. If you look on the right side, you can see the ridge on the lateral femoral condyle that stops the patella from subluxing or dislocating. And you can see the ACL here. You can also see a close up here of the way that the ligaments cross over on the right hand graphic and you can see the different directions of fibres. You've got an anteromedial bundle and a posterolateral bundle. Probably the commonest way for an ACL injury to occur is for the foot to be fixed on the ground and for the rest of the body to rotate on a flexed knee. So there's a graphic here of that. This slide contains a little bit more detail about the actual origins and insertions of the ACL. Here you can see the location of the posterior cruciate ligament so that you can work out that this will limit the backwards movement of the tibia on the femur which is the same as saying it limits the anterior movement of the femur on the tibia. There is a syndrome called O'Donoghue's unhappy triad, which is three injuries in one, and I've tried to illustrate it here. So we have a rupture of the ACL, a rupture of the medial collateral ligament, and because the MCL is attached to the medial meniscus, it actually pulls off part of the meniscus as well. going to come down to the ankle ligaments now. So the ankle joint itself is a hinge joint. There are other joints which act in different ways, but the ankle joint itself 
is a hinge joint. In other words, the joint between the tibia, the fibula and the talus will only dorsi and plantar flex. In the lateral side of the ankle, there are three ligaments that come from the lower end of the fibula at the malleolus. You've got an anterior talar fibula, a posterior talar fibula and a calcaneal fibula. And I've made up a little rhyme here just to help you to remember them. On the medial side of the ankle, things are different. We have a ligament called a deltoid ligament. Delta is the fourth letter of the Greek alphabet and it's a triangular shape. So there's a muscle called deltoid in the shoulder, which is triangular. The deltoid ligament is very strong. In fact, it's so strong that if you evert the ankle joint, you'll quite often pull off the medial malleolus and that gives you an avulsion fracture. This graphic just shows you the differences between the medial ligament on the left and the lateral ligaments on the right. You need to know the attachments of the ligaments, but if you're struggling with the deltoid, it's probably sufficient to say that it's one thick triangular ligament that goes from the medial malleolus to the medial bones in the foot. But if you want more detail, it's actually comprised of four different ligaments with two different lots of fibers. Two lots are deep and two are superficial. If you slide your hand down the lateral aspect of your leg, your thumb represents the anterior talar fibula ligament, your middle finger represents the posterior, and the index finger represents the calcaneal fibula.